Hey Magic fans, I'm Joe. Thanks very much for joining me today. If you'd like to support my channel, please take a moment and check the link above to my Patreon page. I'm here with a replay of a Q with 4 color Soul Herder. I think this is the 5th match that I played with the deck. I won the die roll. And uh, yeah, this is a pic picture perfect opening hand. Uh, it's a turn 2 Oko if, if the opponent doesn't have an answer to my Hierarch. And if they do have an answer to the Hierarch, I still get to play out a Coatl on turn 2, so really good opening hand. In fact, this is really good because I can force the turn 2 Oko. If they have removal on their turn, I can counter it with force. Uh, um, so Blackleaf Cliffs, and what? Alright, Fatal Push. Now, I can see an argument for going for this on their turn. If they let me untap with Hierarch, they don't know what I'm playing. Maybe I'm playing like a, I don't know, some kind of deck that has flash stuff, and maybe I can use the mana from the Hierarch if they let me untap with it. Uh, but it's probably just better to do it on my upkeep, I would think. In fact, in this case, I could use the mana from Hierarch on my upkeep to flash in Coatl, Um But then I'd have nothing to do with my third mana anyway. But since the opponent did it on their turn, very easy choice. I'm going to let my Hierarch live and uh, just go ahead and slam Oko. Alright, make some food, pass the turn. What are you going to do, opponent? Even have an Eternal Witness to get back uh, Oko if they do have an answer. All right, there's a forest, and uh, yeah, well, Assassin's Trophy is going to ramp me. I'll grab a forest, and <laughs> there's a rhino. So uh, I think I'm, even though I could just jam a rhino right now, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab Oko while I have the chance. Swing in with the Hierarch past the turn. Maybe, maybe I should have played the rhino, I'm not sure. Um, if, well, if I play, mm, if I play the Rhino, they could play Liliana. I could just sack the Hierarch. I know that there's like a best play there. Opponent's gonna thought seize me. Probably not gonna like what they see. I'll let they take Oko away. Play a land. No follow up. Um, another Rhino. So Rhino number one. Hit the opponent to thirteen. Swing for three. Hit the opponent to ten. Uh, they're gonna crack their Catacombs. Get a tap Stomping Ground and what? They cycle Nurturing Peatland, and yeah, that's it. They scooped it up. Turn 4 win for the 4-color Siege Rhinoko uh, Soul Herder deck. That, that was pretty amazing, actually. I, that was a really strong opening. We hit our colors, we hit our lands, uh, got Oko down, opponent. What did they do? They Fatal Pushed, they Thought Seized, they Thought Seized again. Uh, they only Thought Seized once, but they Assassin's straight they Fatal Pushed. Thought Seize, Assassin's Trophy, and just, just couldn't slow us down. Pretty strong stuff. Let's go to game two, see how that one went. All right, back for game two. The opponent's on the play. Check out the opening hand. Mm, no lands. That's rough. Uh, yeah, this is a keep. I'll throw one of those Ephemerates uh, under, the, under the deck. Opponent kept seven cards, I do believe. Oh, wait, no. They kept five. <laughs> so... Uh, mulligan versus mulligan, I guess. I wonder if they mulligan to um, hand disruption there to make sure that they get rid of Oko. In this case, that's what they had. Uh, shock land, fetch shock into uh, Inquisition getting rid of Oko. And now my hand does nothing. Whoop, there's another Oko. All right. So the opponent knows that I have this Veil, uh, which is pretty good against their deck. All right, so here's a Dark Confidant. Not lot, a lot I can do about that at this point. Maybe I'll be able to turn it into an Elk with Oko eventually. Um, Hierarch is sort of okay. I could protect that from black removal with Veil. Vale. So I did go and get a, uh, an untapped. I didn't want to um, give them an opportunity, for example, if I crack the fetch on their end step, then with my shields down, they could kill the Hierarch. So get my green mana established before they have a chance to do anything about the Hierarch. Okay, well, Liliana of the Veil, they're going to get in with this Bob, probably. Bold. And then what? Renin 6. 
Well, I've got Veil and I've got Ephemerate. If they go for Hierarch, I could just... Now, they out... it looks like they don't have three lands. So there's a Bloodstained Mire getting their third land uh, online. But now I get to jam Oko. So opponent was able to get rid of the first Oko with Inquisition. Second Oko, going to go ahead and turn uh, the Confidant into an Elk. I'd rather them not draw cards. I'd rather they not draw cards. Let's see. So they get a Blood Crypt. Uh, Ren and Six going to keep getting back that land. So value. Um, all right, opponent going for what? Liliana. So Liliana, um, it's, it's nice uh, having Veil of Summer because if they target me to make me sack something, normally we know like we can't protect our creature um, from a sacrifice effect, but Veil prevents me from getting targeted. Um, spell you and permanent you control gain hexproof. So if they try to target me, I could Veil, but they know I have Veil, so they're probably not going to do it that way. So what is this guy doing? Looks like he's attacking Oko. Of course, if the opponent tries to ping Hierarch, I could Ephemerate it. It would be a pretty poor use of Ephemerate. Um, so I think I have to let this just hit Oko here. I could just plus two him next turn or something. So they're going to make me discard. Um, I like all my cards. But... I guess I'll get rid of Ephemerate. Uh, Veil. Just to draw a card, Assassin's Trophy is pretty solid. Now, for mulling to five, the opponent has just been on fire. They had double hand disruption. Or sorry, no, they pitched one of those, but they did have two of those in hand. And they chose to discard that, I think, which means that the two cards in hand are gas. They mulled to five. They had Dark Confidant, I believe on turn two, Ren and six, and Liliana of the Veil. So I'm just doing my best here. I did mulligan to six myself. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> All right. So the reason I didn't just jam Siege Rhino is the opponent could, um, on their turn, ping and kill Hierarch and then uh, tick down Liliana and make me sacrifice the Rhino, which is just so rough. So I'm going to pause on their upkeep and just... Um, kill the Liliana. It's going to give them another land, but at least it won't uh, make me discard or make me kill a creature. I don't have Veil in hand anymore. All right, so they're trying to kill the Hierarch, and I'd rather not have that thing die. So the opponent has the Bolt. This is like the best mulligan to five ever. And then, of course, the opponent's trying to cast a Bloodbraid Elf, but they're having a really hard time figuring it out. Nope, nope, nope. No, we need some red mana. There we go. Okay. And they cascade into Liliana the Veil. So sometimes you just can't win, you know? Like, Oko does a great job. He does everything that he can, you know? Opponent's going to get to kill him here. I, th I think I'm going to draw garbage. And yeah, I mean, I just, I just scooped here because with the two Planeswalkers, Liliana's going to be able to just kill the Siege Rhino even if I do rip a land. Uh, and we're just toast. So a little bit unfortunate. Being on the draw kind of makes a, a big difference, I think, um, with the initiative. So I'll go to game three. I'll be on the play. Now, hopefully things will go a little bit better. All right, back for game three. I'm going to be on the play. Let's check out the opening hand. This is just excellent. Uh, really, really good. So uh, get a breeding pool, play out a hierarch. Opponent's going to inquisition me and what? I don't know. Maybe take the coaddle. Took the Ephemerate. Uh, it's probably a good choice since I'm going to be able to play a 2-drop and Ephemerate it next turn if they leave it. Uh, Teferi is pretty nice, and that uses all three of my mana, so I think I'll go ahead and do that. Tick him up, make it hard for the opponent uh, to deal with. Now, I, I brought in Teferi because uh, Planeswalkers are pretty good against mid-range. Uh, Teferi in particular um, just makes them play on their main phase, gets rid of any tricks. All right, going to kill the Hierarch, play a tapped Raging Ravine. Uh, I drew Assassin's Trophy, which is a little bit awkward, since I don't have the mana. Um, I wanted to play around Liliana, so I held back on casting a 2-drop. I'll just, I mean, it would have been nice to be able to um, play Oracle and hopefully hit a land right away. 
Um, alternatively, I could have played Quaddle because um, without playing my land drop for the turn already, I could just play out a land if I draw it, but I don't want the opponent to be able to just untap, play a land, and slam Lily and just kill my creature. Uh, so here's Bob. Which is pretty gross. Uh, I'm going to play my Quaddle. Hopefully draw something good. There's a land. Another Quaddle is decent. I'm going to bounce the Bob uh, to ferry, go down to three so he's like weak to bolt. But he draws a fire away from our creatures. Uh, Hierarch is pretty solid. So it's going to um, continue to improve my mana situation. And we do have that other Quaddle uh, here. So Hierarch also buffs uh, this guy. So go ahead and crack in. Hopefully the opponent will continue missing land drops. Uh, you know what? With the opponent shields down, might as well play uh, Charming Prince here and, and just uh, flicker the Kowaddle. Charming Prince is, um, you know, he, he's not weak to Ren and Six like most of our one toughness creatures are. Okay, they're going to Inquisition me, take away the, uh, the second Kowaddle. And what? Bolt to Fairy. That's fine. Leaves my creatures. All right, Ephemerate is excellent. Ephemerate would have been much better if I had um, Teferi still around because the opponent can never respond to Ephemerate. But I do have this Windswept Teeth. Now I can get my Black Mana online for Assassin's Trophy. Crack in for three here. Probably play an Oracle. Uh, Path is nice. So at this point, play the land. Pretty close to equal uh, with cards on the opponent. With the opponent. Um, Let's see, what do they got? All right, so here's a Liliana. And they're, they're just tapping out every turn, which makes cards like Charming Prince so good because you just bring them in and, and flicker anything without fear of removal in response. So maybe discard here. Uh, I'm going to cast Ephemerate in response. Boiling Oracle. Uh, it seemed like it was a good choice because uh, I don't really want that force. Better to draw it now and pitch it. So I have, the opponent's been struggling a little bit on mana, and I have a choice to sort of get rid of Liliana here, but that could potentially uh, get them a swamp so that they could cast Fatal Push, um, or a Mountain, and they cast Bolt, or just turn on Bloodbraid Elf next turn, so I wasn't really feeling killing Liliana with Assassin's Trophy here. Also, I have a tricky choice because, now let me go ahead and get my uh, Overgrown Tomb. The tricky choice is whether I want to let the Ephemerate resolve on the rebound, because currently I have four power that can just get rid of Liliana. If I Ephemerate one of the snakes, then it's suddenly uh, three power. In order to kill Lily, I'd have to like draw another Noble Hierarch. But I decide to do it. I can't pass up the value. And uh, the Coiling Oracle drew me um, a Soul Herder, and then I guess for the turn I drew... Eternal Witness. So two amazing uh, top decks there. Now I can uh, play the Eternal Witness, get back Noble Hierarch, swing for four with the Prince. Seems pretty good. Of course, I'm a little bit worried that the opponent could play like an Anger of the Gods. Okay, so there's... I'm going to get Ephemerate first because we want to start the loop if possible. Uh, Ephemerate the Eternal Witness right away. Again, the opponent's tapped out, so they can't interact with any of this. Get back the Hierarch, play the Hierarch, swing with the Prince, and just, just a really lovely turn there, I think. Uh, so lovely that the opponent just scooped. So um, that was my fifth match with four colors, and it was the third sort of like tier one, tier two deck with, in Jund. So I've played Mono Green Tron, Grixis Death Shadow, and then Jund here. And you can see it, it competes, you know, it does a good job. Uh, Siege Rhinos are big game. Um, Assassin's Trophy, just a very versatile answer. Again, leave your thoughts down below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And if you'd like to support these videos, please take a moment and check out my Patreon page. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Tune in for the next video, and I will be back with the sixth uh, queue that I played with this four-color list so far. And I will see you guys there. Bye.